tonight. Good evening. An evacuation is underway tonight in one McDowell County community. The reason, what could be dangerous levels of methane gas. Volunteer fire crews are telling people in the town of O'Toole near Anawalt to leave their homes. One homeowner reportedly heard rumbling noises underground and realized there may be a gas buildup. Crews are on the scene right now trying to release underground pressure. About 20 families have been evacuated tonight. They're at the Anawalt Fire Department. Well, different concerns tonight on the coast of North Carolina and Virginia. As homeowners prepare for Felix, Hurricane Felix. Doug Aronson has the latest. BC News, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. A suspect wanted for robbery and assault was caught within two hours after an intensive chase by Bluefield police today. McKinley Stevens of Bluefield allegedly robbed a home on Augusta Street after beating someone inside the home. He made off apparently in the victim's vehicle with an undetermined amount of money. Shortly afterwards, the 18-year-old man was spotted in the car. It was reported to police. Authorities say the man then abandoned the car and took off on foot. Police brought in the canine unit and tracked the suspect to his home on 3rd Street. He'll be arraigned tonight on an aggravated robbery charge. A Tazewell County man is hospitalized tonight and charged with driving under the influence of alcohol and not wearing a seatbelt. Mercer County Sheriff's officials say Roger Wilburn was pinned against a guardrail after his truck hit the rail and he was partially thrown from the truck. The accident happened around 745 tonight. The extent of his injuries is not yet known. Well, time to find out our weather for the evening. And Glenn's here with the steamy story for us, Glenn. Yeah, steamy is right. We've got temperatures that you'd like to see about noontime going on tonight. Let's take a look and tell you what you can expect for the remainder of the evening. Mostly clear skies and warm is about as nice as you can put it. Overnight lows in the 60s, probably upper 60s and low 70s. We're going to be back in a couple minutes with a look at the forecast for the rest of the week. Thanks, Glenn. Coming up, more on a meningitis scare that many feared would be an outbreak in Wyoming County. A woman who was hit by a car in Parkersburg was apparently taken to a morgue when she was still alive. 64-year-old Mildred Greathouse was hit by a tractor trailer which severed both of her legs. Rescue personnel at the scene thought the woman was dead, but the coroner, who thought he detected signs of breathing, told them to take her to the hospital. Somehow, she ended up at the morgue by mistake. I think they thought there was someone coming in who was going to need the major trauma room. But it turned out they didn't. And so then you did what? I made my detailed examination, uh, but I could see, obviously, that she was still bleeding. That was the county coroner. Hospital officials realized the mistake and got Great House to the hospital, but the woman died of her injuries about 23 hours later. Authorities are investigating how such a deadly mistake could have happened. Wyoming County residents can rest a little easier tonight. A meningitis scare appears to be over. News Center 6's Scott Harbaugh takes a look. Oceana Football Harbaugh, New Center 6. The man who may be the king of deadbeat dads is in jail tonight after failing to pay more than a half million dollars he owes. Jeffrey Nichols was arrested today after a federal hearing in New York. Prosecutors think he owes more money than any other father in the country. Marilyn Nichols Kane, Nichols' ex-wife, says her ex-husband found ways to evade authorities and has even denied fathering their three children. Authorities say Nichols has tried to hide his money in three states and two foreign countries to avoid paying up. Still to come on the newscast, if you suffer from bad breath or think you might, there may be some new help out there for you. The story next. The Clintons are leaving for a vacation and they'll be staying in a home owned by Senator Jay Rockefeller. President Clinton and his family arrive in Jackson, Wyoming tomorrow for about a two-week stay. The Rockefeller property was owned for years by the senator's uncle as part of his larger western holdings, but he donated much of that land to the federal government to be used as parks. The Wyoming home is the fourth home Senator Jay Rockefeller owns. He also has an estate in Washington and homes in Charleston and Pocahontas County. The First Lady announced today that new commitments are about to happen to learn more about Gulf War Syndrome, and she's vowing to prove there is a sickness that the Pentagon refuses to believe. Sandy Gilmore reports from Washington. NBC News, Washington. A California dentist says he has the technology to save relationships and restore family harmony. As Edie Lambert reports, the dentist has come up with a new way to treat bad breath. I'd stick your tongue out. But with bad breath and the folks around them. 
Two rescuers lost their lives trying to save a hiker over the weekend. It happened on Mount Rainier in Washington State. The rescuers came within a few hundred feet of an injured climber before falling to their deaths. The climber broke his ankle after falling 60 to 80 feet near the summit. A second rescue crew managed to get the hiker down, who was taken by helicopter to a hospital for treatment. The two victims were in their early 20s and are considered experienced climbers. The men are believed to have fallen Saturday night but weren't found until Sunday. Well, quite a forecast Glenn has planned for us this week. We'll find out just how much hotter it's going to get right after this. This is the kind of weather that really makes you feel for those who work outside. Yes. Know? All this week it's going to be really rough on it. It really is. You mentioned we're going to find out how much warmer it's going to get. And the good news is not much warmer. The bad news is not much cooler. Yeah, we're pretty much so, stuck. Uh, yeah, we really are stuck this week as far as the temperatures go. And it doesn't look like any relief, uh, at least through the week. Let's look outside and tell you how things are shaping up this hour. Seven residents. Get some free lemonade tomorrow. 88 or 89.8 degrees today. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> we bump that up to 90 and that serve out the time. lemonade. That's we can right. just uh, add another point, too, and then it makes it legit, right? That's exactly right. You know so. that hurricane, all the talk about the hurricane makes me think of that song, Felix. Nothing it's more than Felix. <laughs> I'm Remember glad. That? I hope you've gotten this out of your system now because we've heard this song a couple times. <laughs> I was telling Glenn, I had this friend in third grade, all her. Uh, up until she was in third grade, thought the song was Felix instead of Feelings, and I cracked up, I don't know, had for years. She's not still that. a friend, is she? <laughs> Actually, she's out in Arizona, and you know, she's one of those oh, people boy. that you have a friend in high school and you don't hear from, they, you know, you graduate and Oh, away. yeah, that's right. So anyway, kind of like what you used to be one of those old friends of mine. Yeah, but then you came back we're to barreling haunt me. down the road to nowhere here. <laughs> you came back to haunt me, Woody. Well, I know, this turned into a Halloween show instead of a sports show. It's Did a little it? go to it. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be a hot week at the ballpark. Oh, it is. Bluefield Especially now that uh, finally Bluefield decided they had the you know, had the chances and uh, the talent to beat Princeton. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, neither could I. In another <laughs> life. You know, tonight at Bowen Field and Bluefield, even a final score of 55 to 13. How about you over and under? How about you? Coming up on the news, we'll find out what some people are doing to try and bring about more equity at the meat market. The story coming up. Variety may be the spice of life, but not for the butcher. Meat packers say they'd like to give shoppers consistent sizes of steaks, roasts, and other cuts of beef, but there's often a problem doing that. New Center 6's Anna Cadet has more on some possible solutions. Cattle come in all shapes and sizes. Six. You know, I guess that's a good idea, but I was talking to Glenn a little bit ago. I like it when the cuts of beef are all different sizes, so you can get it. If you only have a couple bucks, you can get a couple dollars steak. Well, maybe there's something to be right, said for I'm that, too. You. Absolutely. That's Not everybody right. can afford So let's leave it meat. the way it is, you guys at Virginia Tech. Yeah, anyway. Leave it alone. <laughs> that's Do our, something else. That's our news for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you back here tomorrow. This is News Center 6 tonight. Good evening. One person has admitted guilt in the bombing of the Oklahoma City Federal Building. Michael Fortier has agreed to testify for the government. In exchange, he's being charged with lesser crimes. Fortier could receive up to 23 years in prison in return for his testimony. Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols were indicted today on 11 counts. Both of them could face the death penalty. A McDowell County man facing the death penalty in Arizona spoke to reporters for the first time today. Ronald Williams, convicted of three murders, is locked up in the Mount Olive State Pen while he waits to be taken to Arizona. As New Center 6's Juliet Nader reports tonight, Williams does not think he deserves the death penalty. Six. Four men authorities say may have been terrorizing campers in the New River Gorge have been arrested. Fayette County Sheriff's officials say there were reports that five men pulled two people from their car while they were camping last night along Fayette Station Road, physically attacked them, then demanded money. Sheriff's officials say they arrived while the crime was still in progress. They arrested Roger Sweet of Anstead, Sean Dixon, and Michael and Jerry Zimmerman, all of Lansing. One of the men posted bond. The others are still behind bars tonight. Sheriff's authorities say the men may have also committed similar crimes crimes last night in the gorge. The case is still under investigation by the Sheriff's Department, the State Police, and the National Park Service. 
A big drug sting in McDowell County and at least 15 people have been arrested. In all, police say they seized about 8 ounces of crack cocaine and $11,000 after searching several homes and apartments in North Fork and Keystone. Authorities say they have warrants for 16 more people tonight. A think tank of some of the highest ranking state educators in Beckley tonight. College presidents, superintendents and other educators came to Beckley for one of eight statewide education first panel meetings. Some of the topics they covered, community partnerships, technology and professional and career development. There's a lot of people out here that live every day in education, have children in education, businesses that receive the, the product of education that need to take a look at this and need to give us feedback about how beneficial these engines of achievement may be. The information gathered tonight will be taken to Charleston for the state education panel to use in developing its final goals. Well, time to find out what's making weather news tonight. Here's Glenn with a quick update for us. Glenn? Well, we've seen plenty of scattered rain showers across the region tonight. Really no rhyme or reason to them. Let's take a look and tell you what we can expect for the remainder of the evening. Just partly cloudy skies. Still a slight chance for some rain showers. We're going to look for overnight lows in the 60s. Back in a few moments with the complete weather forecast. And coming up on the news, a new development in a suit filed by Pittston Cole against the UMW. Pittston's multi-million dollar lawsuit against the UMW is now a no-go. A federal judge in Abingdon, Virginia dismissed the $120 million suit. Pittston sued the union in 1993, claiming the UMW's lobbying efforts for a bill to restore health benefits for retired minors violated the settlement of the union's 10-month strike against the company. A strike may be coming by Bell Atlantic workers. The union announced today Bell Atlantic employees are ready for a strike. Contract talks continue in Washington, but workers are still without a new contract. Three other regional phone companies whose contracts expired have reached agreements. A fourth company is reportedly very close. Bell Atlantic is blaming the union for problems at their bargaining table. A picket by CWA members in Bluefield, but it has nothing to do with Bell Atlantic. Members of Local 2276 of Bluefield were holding what they call an informational picket outside Telescript's cable offices. They say they want the public to know that several members of their sister union working inside are working without a contract. The contract that's been offered to these people is a contract that if uh, if you look at it in its entirety, it would take between 12 and 15 years, additional years, before these individuals would get a raise. Don Kersey with Telescript's Cable says his company has made an offer to the local CWA, but it was turned down. Kersey says negotiations are continuing. A day many Bluefield residents have been waiting for today. The East River Mountain Overlook project is now officially underway, and Susan Pavley was there. On July 11th in Mercer County, Susan Pavley, News Center 6. Coming up, it's Judgment Day for Heidi Fleiss as the jury finally decides her fate. The story in a couple of minutes. President Clinton is trying to curb teenage smoking, but some lawmakers are angry about it. An Oklahoma senator says Congress, not the president, should oversee smoking. Clinton formally announced today he's ordering new federal rules on the issue. He's giving the FDA authority to regulate the sales, promotion, and distribution of cigarettes. Clinton says his decision has nothing to do with adult smoking. A conviction today for Heidi Fleiss. A federal jury in L.A. found her guilty of hiding hundreds of thousands of dollars in earnings from a call girl I'm ring she ran. Pressure. Fleiss broke down as the verdicts were read. It took jurors six days to come up with the guilty verdict. She'll be sentenced November 13th. She faces a maximum of about five years in prison. Some tense moments in Kanawha County, West Virginia today. Early this morning, residents of an apartment building near St. Albans had to evacuate after Tackett Creek flooded. Floodwaters in the apartment building were as high as six feet in some areas. The water rose in a span of about 30 minutes, leaving people very little time to evacuate. Time now to check out some of the activities and entertainment in the area. Coming up, here's our After Hours calendar. Coming up, will it rain or will it shine? We'll find out in just a couple of minutes with Glenn's forecast. Don't go away.
a lot of people have been talking about how dry it's been. I know yes. I have, and my yard is pretty much turned to a brown carpet Man. out there. Well, you know what? It's okay because the grass goes dormant in oh, situations like this. Yeah, and when you get the rain, you get significant rainfall. It'll, it'll come back, so there's no need quite to panic yet. Will it come back by the weekend because I have a lot to do and I don't feel like mowing? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. There's, tomorrow's about our last chance for some significant rainfall oh, really? before the weekend. Rain's been real selective on where it's been yeah. falling the last few days. You know, I Princeton know. seeing some rain. Well, today I was out. Parts of Bluefield. Yeah, Beckley. today I was out uh, working out and I went from Bluefield, West Virginia to the post office to mail and then I went towards Bluefield, Virginia and right around the Sam's Club there was just this dividing line where it stopped yep. altogether. And almost, it's like, okay, we're not supposed to rain here. It's, I know. A, it's What's incredible the deal? how things are working. Let's look outside. Tell you what's half week. Overnight lows in the upper 60s. Temperatures very warm and mild throughout the weekend. Tomorrow's really our last chance for some significant rainfall. Well, it's good that we can get it and maybe get it out in time for the weekend yeah, and enjoy get the in time. Fears. We're going to get the clouds out of the way and temperatures will be back up. So yeah, enjoy the, summer while it while it lasts. Right, enjoy those clear skies before the uh, state fair starts, which yeah. usually it rains during <laughs> right. the state fair. Looks like know? they're going to get off to a good start, so that's good news. Yeah, it really is. And Woody's here with uh, some news on Mount View. I know they always have a great football team, and I guess the prognosis is the same this time around. Well, this year they have uh, not only a good chance of being a very good football team, but they also have possibly the best quarterback in the entire state. We'll get to all that, of course. Well, I know there was supposed to be a big game in Bluefield tonight with the old Orioles, but I guess Mother Nature got in the way. Well, Mother happened. Nature, she has a way of getting in the way every now and then. Of course, we blame it on Glenn. But we are glad to get the rain. Let's not let people think we're complaining because we sure oh, did. Oh, well, the way the Orioles are playing, as we say, they need a day off. They're only 16 and a half games in front. You know, folks, tonight at Bowen Field, the battle between golfers, including Greg Norman, are in at five under par after shooting first round. Come on back. 65s. Sorry about that. Run out of time. I think you got a little, you went a little too long on that stuff. Well, Those you know, dramatic pauses. That there. dramatic pause has caused me to go into black. I'm sorry about that, and we'll see you tomorrow. And I've heard you and Mark talking about all the uh, high school football previews that you're getting ready to do here coming up soon, right? That's right. Well, we started a little bit earlier this week. We're going to try to profile yeah. all the area teams as many as we can here on the news at 6 and 11. But then on the 25th, we have a big high school football special, of course, called Gridiron Madness 95. Mm -hmm. And we'll be a, a complete preview of the 1995 season from Oakland Mountain. State and, of course, the Commonwealth. Looking forward to that, as always. Thanks, Woody. Coming up, we'll tell you about a casting call in Monroe County. Who knows, our Scott Harbaugh may even be the next star. Yet another casting call in West Virginia. The last time was for a movie starring Richard Gere. The second casting call is in Monroe County. And who knows, you could even be the next star. Scott Harbaugh takes a look. I don't know. Do you think Scott's going to stick around with us? Reminds me of Clark. Hollywood, <laughs> Florida, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Clark. he looks pretty chic in those glasses, those shades. You definitely needed him today. It was hot yeah, and sunny in other places. Day. That's our news for this evening. For Glenn and Woody, I'm Loretta Budd. Thanks for tuning in tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. You have been watching News Center 6, the region's most watched newscast. from the region's number one news team, Barrett Van and Loretta Budd with the news, Glenn Willie's weather, and Mark Brown with sports. This is News Center 6 Tonight. Good evening, an amazing turnaround for the once troubled workers' compensation fund. Auditor Paul Arbogast says the fund's financial condition has improved so much, he no longer questions its future. He says the fact that the workers' comp fund's finances conform with generally accepted accounting principles is a major achievement. But all is not well. It will still take 40 years to make the fund solvent. And there's a case before the state Supreme Court challenging the new reform law that Arbogast credits for the fund's improvement. School boards that charge for textbooks won't be able to any longer. The state Supreme Court yesterday told Randolph County it cannot charge a book fee for students in public schools. Monroe County is one of eight in the state that charges for books. In just the 1994-95 school year, the Monroe County BOE collected $60,000 in fees. That money has been held in an account pending the outcome of the Randolph County case. Can West Virginia schools afford to lose $30 million? Education officials say no, but they also say it's a real possibility the funding won't be there. U.S. Secretary of Education Richard Riley says West Virginia stands to lose the funds under a Republican budget plan. Over the next seven years, the lost funding could total into the hundreds of millions of dollars. State officials say special math and reading programs for the poorest students would be hardest hit. 
Another financial boost for the planned Interstate 73, Senator Robert Byrd says the Federal Department of Transportation has sent down $1.5 million to pay for an environmental study on the road. Route 52 through McDowell and Mercer counties will be upgraded to four lanes as part of I-73. If downtown parking in Beckley wasn't bad enough already, it's about to get worse. The city will close its parking garage for three weeks starting Saturday night because engineers have found it may be unstable. Business owners near the garage say shoppers like very close parking spaces and now that'll be almost impossible. I think it will really hurt this end of town because Everybody that comes here usually just parks in the parking garage and just right up the hill. It will definitely affect us very negatively. Beckley Mayor Emmett Pugh says the garage has more than 400 spaces. 110 of those are taken by monthly renters. He says the city will refund their money and help them find alternate parking. He says they'll decide in the next three weeks whether to make repairs or rebuild the garage. Well, it's a pretty mild night out there around the two Virginias. What can we expect when we wake up in the morning, Glenn? Well, we'll probably can expect to see some fog in the morning. In fact, that's what we're going to expect overnight. Let's take a look outside, tell you what we are expecting. Some rain showers tonight and into the early morning hours. Very, very thick fog in some areas, so be careful tonight with the uh, late night driving. Overnight lows, real comfortable, mid to upper 40s in a lot of areas. Back here in about 10 minutes with a complete look at the weekend weather forecast. Thanks, Glenn. Still ahead on News Center 6 tonight, it looks like the federal government may shut down again. Midnight tonight is the deadline for a new agreement. We'll let you know where negotiations stand next. They whine, they moan, they pester you for what they want. Not your kids. They're easy. Your husband. Cool. If he likes football, he'll love the greatest moments in Super Bowl history. Now exclusively at Food Lion, where you can register to win a trip to the 1996 Super Bowl. Meanwhile, you'll save big with Food Lion's extra low prices. So come to Food Lion and get the Super Bowl video before your little boy starts whining. Food Lion, extra low prices and more. Honey, can you make me another sandwich? Our parents took care of us when we were young. Now they need our help. Newt Gingrich and the Republicans want to slash Medicare, Medicaid, and break the government's pledge to provide health care for retired coal miners or their widows, just to give the rich another tax giveaway. Join the members and families of the United Mine Workers of America and tell the Republicans, hands off our parents' health care. They've earned it. The UMWA, fighting for working and retired Americans and their families every day. So what's it going to be, Dion? Football or baseball? Both, boss. Both? Both. Offense or defense? Both. Both? Both. 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 Pizza Hut. Meat lovers or stuffed crust pizza? Both. 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 Want it all? Now Pizza Hut offers our lovers line toppings. Meat lovers, pepperoni lovers, or supreme. Piled high in a stuffed crust pizza. So what'll it be, Dion? 15, 20 million? Both. Both. You'll love the stuff we're made of. A North Carolina trucker admits murdering two women at truck stops. 29-year-old Sean Patrick Goble pleaded guilty in Tennessee court to the killings and was immediately sentenced to two consecutive life prison terms. One of the victims, Brenda K. Hagee, was found dead last January in Washington County, Virginia. Goble is also expected to plead guilty in North Carolina to second-degree murder in the death of a third woman. An Ohio man who'd been fired from his job at a trucking company allegedly went back for revenge. Witnesses say the 53-year-old worker walked into the offices of Transcontinental Systems and began shooting. Three workers were killed. The gunman reportedly walked out of the building after the shootings and immediately surrendered to police. Authorities say the man had been fired several months ago. It's not clear who the gunman was targeting. The minimum wage may be going up, that is, if Labor Secretary Robert Reich gets his way. Reich says Congress has the moral responsibility to increase the minimum wage to $5.15 an hour in 1997. Twelve million people make less than that right now. Reich says at a time when Congress wants to move people, more people off welfare, they should be rewarding work with higher wages. The government is close to another shutdown if a budget agreement isn't reached by midnight. And as Sandy Gilmore reports, it's once again down to the wire. <laughs> Senate and House Republicans at a pep rally this morning. But we tell you, Mr. President, we tell you unequivocally, we are not going to leave this capital until we have a balanced budget. And you better stay here, too. 
A leaner team of White House and Republican budgeteers began intense negotiations on the seven-year balanced budget plan, but after seeing the latest administration proposal, GOP members abruptly called off the talks, saying the president was cooking the books. This administration and the Democrats that they want to bring along just insist that they don't want to really change the budget of the United States. They just want to use optimistic, rosy economics and cook the books. Democrats accused the Republicans of trying to dismantle key social programs like Medicare and Medicaid using government shutdowns as leverage. But for goodness sakes, do not, do not use this as a threat to shut down the federal government and to hurt innocent people, particularly at Christmas time. Republicans said they would try to pass a temporary spending bill to avoid a shutdown tonight, but could not guarantee passage. A shutdown this time, though, would affect mostly only national parks until Monday, when far fewer office workers would be affected than during the last shutdown. So as of now, a partial government shutdown tonight is possible, unless Republican leaders can get enough of their own troops to call it off. Sandy Gilmore, NBC News, Washington. 17 West Virginia soldiers will be seeing service in Europe by the end of the month. It is not clear yet if they'll go to Bosnia, but Governor Caperton says they'll support NATO peacekeeping efforts. The soldiers are part of the 152nd Military Police Detachment in Moundsville. They must serve a maximum of 270 days. And up next, quite a Christmas present for a young girl. That's right. She gets to smile for the very first time. Her story, next. This year, Cellular One is helping a very busy someone make wishes come true. With free weekend airtime, cellular to cellular calls for just 10 cents a minute, and hometown service. And in the holiday spirit, Cellular One is also offering select phones at holiday prices. Because Santa's going to stuff the stockings of all the good boys and girls with great stuff from Cellular One. Cellular One, for the holidays and every day. When it's the thought that counts, give Forgive Me Not cards from American Greetings, value priced every day at Magic Mart. T-Fall's 10-piece Royale cookware makes a great gift for the cook in your family, only $88.99. Magic Mart has a sound of savings this Christmas. New releases from Epic Records include Ken Mellon's, Joe Diffie's Christmas, and Ozzy Osbourne. The latest from Columbia Records include Dolly Parton, Michael Bolton, and Mariah Carey. Sale price CDs, $11.88, cassettes, $7.88. The Holiday Magic Store. Medic Alert can deliver your vital medical information anywhere in the world within seconds. If you have special medical needs, call Medic Alert today. You've been holding back all year. Isn't it about time you did something good for yourself? Like stopping by your Chevy Geo dealer during the year in countdown and getting low 4.9% APR financing or an affordable smart lease on this fabulous Chevy Lumina. It includes great features like standard dual airbags, room for six adults, and powerful V6. And that's just for starters. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can enjoy today. Chevy's year in countdown ends January 8th. With Christmas only nine days away, many people are out searching for that perfect tree. But Lieutenant Robbie Brennan of the Bluefield Fire Department says there are certain precautions that should be taken with your tannin bomb. One, give it plenty of water, but don't put it near any heating units, and be careful when picking lights. The lights is where I would draw the line, and if they're old, I'm, I'm pulling them off. And so all these are new and, and safe, uh, and these little ones do. Although they put off a lot of heat, it's nothing like the big old screw-in socket types. Brennan also suggests using a big sturdy stand to help hold more water and stabilize the tree. It's been a green Christmas of sorts for many of Virginia's Christmas tree growers. The president of the Virginia Christmas Tree Growers Association, Norman Edwards, estimates sales by state Christmas tree growers are up about 5% from last year. Edwards says there's no sure way of knowing, but he guesses that last year's Christmas tree sales topped $10 million. Becoming more popular with Christmas tree buyers this year were the choose and cut tree farms.
More than 2,500 children will receive Christmas gifts in Raleigh County tomorrow. It's all thanks to Max Toy Fund. Organizers were loading up and getting ready for the event today. The 65th annual gift and money collection is almost at its goal of $23,000. And tomorrow, a party will be held at the Raleigh County Armory at 9 a.m. to make sure lots of needy children have pleasant memories of the holidays. Tickets for the toys have been already had already been given to children pre-selected by the Department of Health and Human Resources. Well, some doctors in California are giving a Los Angeles County girl the best birthday present she could ask for, a smile. The seven-year-old has a rare nervous disorder that has affected her facial muscles her whole life. Thanks to a new surgical procedure, the little girl will be smiling very soon. Tracy Savage reports. Seven-year-old Chelsea Thomas held her favorite doll close to her as she arrived at the hospital. This is the day Chelsea and her parents have been waiting for. A crush of news cameras followed her every step. Let's move back a little bit. Chelsea was born with a rare neurological disorder. Her facial muscles are paralyzed, so she's never been able to smile. Two years ago, her mother found out about a special surgery that will correct the problem. But there was another problem, a big one. Their HMO, Kaiser Permanente, refused to pay for the surgery. After a long battle, Kaiser gave in and agreed to foot the $70,000 bill. Today is the first of two procedures. Get it over with, at least get half of it over with, and um, get her on the mend so we can get side two done, and hopefully she'll be smiling by her birthday in June. Chelsea is so excited, her parents say she was jumping with enthusiasm last night. And she knows exactly what will happen today. As for dad, very nervous and excited, excited for Chelsea. Chelsea's story has been followed closely by local news media. The seven-year-old seems to have picked up a few tips and tried her hand at playing reporter. She's taking this all very well. Much better than mom and dad. Chelsea's surgery began at 8.30. We got an update shortly after. What these uh, remarkable uh, surgeons are going to do is to uh, take a piece of muscle uh, with its nerve supply and uh, blood supply from her leg and transplant it into her face. Chelsea can't wait to stop the teasing from other kids, to show the world how she really feels, and to give the cameras the beaming smile that until now, she's only been able to wear inside her heart. Looks like she definitely has a sense of humor, yeah, even if she can't smile. No doubt. Well, here it is uh, mid-December, and it feels like spring. That's right. Is this great weather going to hold on <laughs> for the weekend? Lynn joins us next with details. The 9th Street Market in Philadelphia, they make a Philly roast beef sandwich that's piled high with tender sliced roast beef, fresh onions and green peppers cooked on the grill, and two slices of Swiss cheese. Now you can get that same great taste at Hardee's. Our new tender recipe roast beef in Hardee's new Philly roast beef sandwich. If you can't come here, come to Hardee's for Hardee's Philly roast beef sandwich. Fresh from the kitchen at Hardee's. Bring in the new year now at Autumn House Furniture's inventory clearance sale. Our lowest prices just got lower. We're discounting the sale prices. Gigantic reductions. Prices are slashed to move it out. Every item in both stores has been marked down so low, we can't even mention how low the prices really are. Off the inventory sheet and out the door. This sale can't last forever. Come by today. Autumn House Furniture, Eisenhower Drive, Beckley, Mercer Street, Princeton. A runner, a teacher, a worker, a lover, around and round, both day and night. Rite Aid makes it easy to save, like Vanilla Musk, Jovan, or Gravity gift sets, only $9.99. M&M's The One Pound Bag, just $1.99. And Children's Motrin, two ounces, only $3.29. For your life, Rite Aid's got it. In this life, you need it all. Super fresh. Acme brings you the freshest produce, meat, and poultry. Fresh from the farm each day. Holiday savings continue with Ocean Spray Cocktail Juice, two for $5. Save 50 cents on Ballard Sausage, just $1.19. Hershey's Candy Kisses make great snacks, only $1.99. 
perfect for baking, Crisco shortening, $1.99. Fresh produce, fresh meat. Quality products at low, low prices. It just makes dollars and cents to shop Acme. Boy, a nice day out there Isn't today. Isn't it nice? Well, it's nice for us. I mean, if you own a ski resort or something, when Yeah, they're <laughs> probably not too happy <laughs> about it. Boy, today we were running almost 20 degrees above normal in a lot of areas. I'll tell you, it was wonderful. Makes Hard you feel like spring. I mean, I think you, yeah, you want to go out and plant bulbs or something. A I don't know. week from today <laughs> is the first day of winter, or winter begins. The first full day, so. of course, would be say, oh, it is yeah. so. Oh, Let's no. go outside and uh, tell you how things are shaping up tonight. doesn't feel like winter. 53 degrees at the Mercer County Airport. That's 10 degrees above a normal high for this time of year. Humidity's at 80%. The barometer's falling. Winds out of the west, 7 miles per hour. No precipitation to report. Let's check out the Raleigh County Airport where it's 49 degrees. 96% humidity, lots of fog in the area tonight. The barometer's falling. Winds out of the southeast at 7 and 8 hundredths of an inch of precipitation from the Raleigh County Airport. Here's a check across uh, temperatures in our area tonight. Real mild, 51 in Oak Hill. That's the warm spot. Stan's backyard in White Sulphur Springs is a cool spot at 41 degrees. Lots of fog in Greenbrier Valley uh, also across the area tonight, and that should linger on into the the morning hours and we are expecting some rain showers tonight have a cold front the first of two trying to push through here high pressure off the coast keeping things backed up a little bit but these will get through by tomorrow a little bit of precipitation associated with this one you see a real long big line of showers here just starting to creep into northern portions of West Virginia but we bring it out a little closer and it's not coming any closer to us tonight we should see some showers tonight though especially from this area here in uh, western portion or eastern portions of Kentucky Those those should roll through tonight and probably expect to see some showers early on in the morning. By tomorrow, everything pushes through pretty nicely. In fact, tomorrow afternoon should see plenty of sunshine. Daytime highs up near 50 degrees again. A normal high would be about 42 degrees. So we're riding way, way above normal for temperatures this time of year. A little bit of a drop off tomorrow night because of the cool temperatures, uh, clear skies. We should drop down just a little bit in the temperature department, but shouldn't be too bad overall. High pressure going to bring in some cooler air behind that front. Taking a look at the situation by the end of the weekend, much the same. Should be a real nice day on Saturday. Have an area of low pressure here that's going to come up and looks like possibly some showers on Monday and Tuesday. Monday looks like a better chance right now, but depending on how this goes, it could hold off a little more until Tuesday. Sunday looks nice though too. Daytime highs again, upper 40s, maybe some low 50s. Overnight lows though will be a little cool because skies will be clear, so that will allow the cold air to really get settled in during the weekend overnight. So cold in the evenings, warm during the day. Things don't look too bad at all for this weekend after tomorrow morning. Let's back it up and start over again tonight. Rain likely. Fog develops overnight and it'll be pretty thick in some areas, so be careful uh, doing late night and early morning driving. Overnight low is going to average right out in the mid to upper 40s tonight. And then tomorrow could start out with some patchy rain showers, some light drizzle in the morning. Then clearing looks real nice by afternoon. Daytime highs again up near 50 degrees. Tomorrow night clear and cold. Overnight lows mid to upper 20s, maybe 30 degrees tomorrow night. Here's the extended outlook to get through the weekend. Sunny skies on Sunday, daytime highs again right around 50 degrees and still hanging pretty close to 50 on Monday and Tuesday. Going to call for partly cloudy skies right now, but we could see a rain shower from that area down to our south that we showed you. Daytime highs in the upper 40s, overnight lows in the low 30s. And as we draw to a close, I want to say, Barrett, really enjoyed working with you and uh, going to miss you. and. Uh, Best of luck to you and your family. This is Barrett's last night, so yes. I wanted to get my goodbye from the weather department. <laughs> so you're going to let me be your Oklahoma weather spotter? Yes, you will be our and... Tahlequah weather spotter. First tornado, <laughs> I'm expecting video and uh, That's right. commentary. Live report. <laughs> Best of luck to you and your family. Barrett. Stranger things have happened. Thanks, Glenn. Mm -hmm. Well, coming up in sports, a look ahead to Marshall's 1AA final. And Bluefield opens its state title defense. Right, Mark? Exactly right, and they didn't miss much of a beat on opening night. We'll have highlights of that. Take a trip up to Oak Hill, plus go over to Marshall show you the scores and Marshall hoops tonight all after a check on the scores back with more in a moment
I believe in a simpler life. When people said please and thank you, I believe in an honest day's work. And I believe in classic American food at Shonen's. Now, let's see, which one's it gonna be? A juicy steak and potato or a good fried shrimp dinner? Either way, you can sit down to one of these dinners with Shoney's Soup and Salad Bar for only $5.99. Steak or shrimp? I believe I'm hungry. Mm. Come home for Family Week on Wheel of Fortune. The season's best. From our family to yours. Relax from all that shopping and catch a holiday tradition. Family Week on Wheel of Fortune. Then on Jeopardy. He frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Honolulu. He was immortalized by singers Peter, Paul, and Marin. Who's puffed the magic dragon? Right. Send in the clowns on the next Monday Jeopardy. Monday Saturday, starting at 7 p.m. Only WBBA Television 6. See what's up on Ricky Lake. You know he loves you, you just want him to admit it. You've been dating him for years, but he's never said he loves you. It's time for him to admit it to himself and to me that he does love me. You're sure that she loves you. There's no doubt in your mind he has to love me. But it's those words he just can't find. It's gonna make us or break us. Really? Now it's time he admits he loves you. Do you want him to come clean today and admit it once and for all? Yeah. He's a bunch of bull. <laughs> Next Ricky Lake. Monday afternoon at 3. WVBA Television 6 and First Community Bank want to honor the two Virginia's outstanding students. As a teacher, you can make that happen. Teachers in the WVBA viewing area can nominate students who excel in self-improvement, attitude, attendance, and participation. To submit an application, contact your school principal. Help recognize the two Virginia's outstanding students. Send your nominations for Student of the Week. Brought to you by First Community Bank and WVBA Television 6. Bluefield High School basketball to talk about tonight. Highlights and the whole shebang. Start the year and rank number one in Class AA, a prohibitive favorite to get back to the state tournament. And boy, they got a lot of talent. Bluefield coach Danny Gaither may have lost three starters and a few reserves from last year's Class AA state championship team, but you would never know it. The Beavers didn't miss a beat in tonight's opener against James Monroe over at the Brush Fork Armory, where Gaither turned the horses loose early. Here comes his own son, Matt Gaither, down the lane. Pretty move for two. Bluefield off to a 6 nothing lead in this one. Then watch it. One of those new additions to the team. Jack Wright. Boy, is he quick with a big steal right there. The pass ahead to Corey Pinnell for the layup. All of a sudden Bluefield has a 10-0 lead. James Monroe didn't back down, though. Here comes Mark Grigsby. Pretty pass to Neil Dunlap for two off the glass right there, but the Mavericks basically had nothing for A.J. Martin and crew tonight. Bluefield a winner on opening night. They beat James Monroe 97 to 51. Our next stop up to Oak Hill, the Lily Center. We call it the Lily Pad for Oak Hill and Valley Fayette. Here's Cornelius Jackson passing it over for a three-pointer right there. Oak Hill looking good in the first half. What Valley coming right back. Actually, this is second half action. Wesley Dye, three-pointer right there. Valley staying in it, but Oak Hill had uh, much too much tonight. Here's Lamar Martin with the steal and the layup at the other end. The Red Devils 2-0 now as they win 73-66. Other scores on this night. Well, Greenbrier East, the winner over Mountain View, 86 to 62 up at Spar up at uh, Greenbrier East High School. They're now 1-0. Pikeview a loser on the road to Sarita Canova, 88-64. Mullins beat Pineville tonight, 65-48 to go to 2-0. Greenbrier West over Shady Spring, 58-40. Independence beat Marsh Fork, 62-47. And behind 41 points from John Spencer, Ballard Christian over Victory Christian, 79-64. Now let's go back up to Fayette County, to the Fayette County Memorial Building, Fayetteville and Mount Hope. First quarter, Fayetteville working it around. Lee Casas to Josh Akers. Watch him drive in the lane, make a nice little head fake, and drop it off to Shane Withrow for the two points right there for the Pirates, but Mount Hope answers on the other end. Here's Mullins driving into the lane, picking up the loose ball, driving into the lane and hitting the 14-footer. Nice shot right there, but Fayetteville right back. This time, Casas from the outside will pull up and hit a three-pointer on his own after he adjusts a couple of times. Fayetteville beats Mount Hope 70. 263 tonight. Next stop over at Montcalm. The Generals hosting the Rocky Gap Eagles out of Virginia. First quarter, here's Chad Blevins driving and scoring right here for the Montcalm Generals. Rocky Gap comes right back. Will Dotson, three-pointer count it. It's good. And uh, Rocky Gap moves in front in the first quarter, but here comes Montcalm right back. David White to Josh Bailey. Two on the blocks right there for Montcalm. Dotson will step back outside for Rocky Gap and hit another three-pointer. This one of three threes of the first half, but it not enough tonight as Montcalm wins 59 to 
51. Well, meanwhile, two state champions and two state tournament teams gathered at Summers County High School for the Lady Bobcat Classic tonight. Mercer Christian facing Lewis County in the first game of that tournament tonight. We'll pick this one up very late. Lewis County just trying to stay in it. Paige Hall hitting a three-pointer right there for the Lewis County. And here comes Lewis right back. Sabrina Stout with the steal and the layup at the other end. Mercer Christian, though, basically in the fourth quarter had the reserves in just doing a little mop-up duty. Here's one of those reserves. Andrea Webb hitting a three-pointer for the sophomore from outside. Mercer wins, moving into the final 68-42. Now the second game matched the host Summers County Lady Bobcats against Webster County. Webster's Jody Williams driving down the lane for the first two points of the game. Okay, fun's over now, here because here comes Summers County. Stephanie Meadows just inside the three-point line. Count it right there for Summers. And then watch Laura Rollison come up with a pretty play here. The steal and the layup. Rollison had a huge night. 34 points. It'll be Summers facing Mercer Christian tomorrow for the championship. Summers wins 84-68. We have one more girls basketball score to pass along to you tonight. That one from over at Montcom where Angela Lustig scored 22 points as Montcom beat Jaeger 60-45. Well, it's championship Saturday at Marshall Stadium, and unlike last year, the home team is around for the party. Marshall faces Montana tomorrow at noon for the 1AA title. Marshall coach Jim Donnan is hoping home sweet home can slow down Montana's potent passing game and hand the herd its second title in the past five years. I think uh, our field will help us. Our speed and quickness should help us some on this because their kids are used to grass field and uh, talking to coaches in their conference. Uh, you know, they're very tough at home, and I'm sure it'll be tough here, but, uh, you know, we have an advantage playing on turf, I think. Front people are as good as we have ever, ever, I'm sure, played. Uh, there's two or three of those guys are NFL players. Everybody says that that we talk to. Uh, the linebackers are good. Their secondary is good. They're just an outstanding. And they're the number one defensive team in the country, so... We've got a matchup here, number one offense against the number one defense, and uh, it's an interesting matchup. Well, the game is a sellout, but 2,000 standing room only tickets go on sale tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Tonight, the attention was on the Marshall basketball team. Billy Donovan and crew hosting Southwestern Louisiana at the Henderson Center. Marty Fletcher been down this road before, back in his days coaching at VMI, but he hadn't seen this guy before. Sidney Coles out of Greenbrier East. Baseline drive for two right there. It's a 14-point Marshall lead, but here come the raging Cajuns. Conley Verndon, count it. Three-pointer good from the left side there. Verndon not done, though, just getting started. As a matter of fact, backs up another three-pointer from the right corner. He had 20 points tonight, but watch Coles inside again mixing it up two plus the foul off the rebound right there Marshall wins tonight 77 to 70 they hope things go as well tomorrow on the football field yeah, and since true. the weather department did it all one of us <laughs> all one of us in the sports department would like to wish you best of luck too if I ever need any Thanks. Oklahoma Sooner highlights I'll call you okay I know who to call all right good luck Thanks. well as everybody knows by now time is running out for Barrett I'll uh, have my final goodbye in uh, just a moment I should mention, though, that uh, Loretta's going to be in a Christmas parade um, tomorrow, tomorrow at 3 o'clock, along with uh, Glenn, Mark Brown. Mark. And I'm going to try me. <laughs> a couple of us. Kind of well, and several others from the 6 o'clock crew are going to be there, too. So I'm yeah. be here watching football. Hopefully it'll be good weather <laughs> tomorrow for that parade. I'll be and, out there watching. And I've got a special going away present for Barrett. Glenn. Here's something clanking over there. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn is my lovely, Glenn is my lovely ahead, assistant, Mark. and he uh, is handing me these mugs. I made these in my pottery class for you. Oh, nice. And now I'm going to do something that I've always wanted to do. I'm going to reach out. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't. Yeah. It's gonna, still it moves. It's, it's, it's real. It, it, is, it is. I've, it always, is wanted it to is prove, I've always wanted to prove to everybody that Barrett's hair is real. And it, it is. I can't it is mess true. it up, though, for some reason. Well, it, it's stuck. It, it's, just, it's just that way forever. It's, I've always it's wanted to do nature. that. I feel so well, much These better. are real nice. Very nice. It well, says, uh, yeah, Bud, 95. That's so I'll always remember... Who gave this for us? Yeah, so, and you drink a lot of coffee, so I know you'll put them to good oh, use. Oh, yeah, I put I put away the coffee around here, I think. Uh, <laughs> tell us, <laughs> tell us where you're going again, because oh, yeah. it looks like well, we've got time. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, we plenty yeah. of time. Thank you, thank you, time. Well, this is about my last night here, so uh, we decided to reserve about an hour and a half to say goodnight tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, actually, uh, I'm going to Oklahoma, as I told you last night, for those of you who are watching last night, and I'll probably be uh, taking over my dad's business. He's going to be retiring from Sonic Drive-In. It's a restaurant. It's a hamburger chain. It has about 1,450. Uh, <laughs> this is not an infomercial. <laughs> Sonic's nationwide, and his is one of those in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. It's where I grew up, and that's where my family is and everything, and so looks like I'll be taking uh, over that here in a couple of years, which will be quite a thrill because that's where all my family is, and uh, that's really the basis for me making this decision. It's going to be kind of 
strange getting out of uh, TV news, though. Yeah, it looks like a lot of us will be making trips out to Oklahoma. It'll be my first <laughs> trip out to come visit you while you're out there. Stop crying. I, I'm going to get all cracked up here. <laughs> I, I cry at Kodak commercials, so you know, it's just me. But anyway, I want to say, Barrett, it's been great working with you over the years. I've really you. enjoyed it. Thank you. It really has been a, a wonderful five years, and the people in this community have, have made, you know, living in, in this area wonderful. They really are uh, nice around here. Um, I would like to say that I, I've uh, really enjoyed working with, uh, you know, Woody Morgan and, and Stan Sweet and uh, Glenn Willie and Mark Brown and, and of course, Loretta. But over the years, you better say and, that. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it's really, really been great. I couldn't ask for uh, anything more. And uh, here comes Jason Smith <laughs> onto the set right now. <laughs> oh, boy. It's been great work with you. Thank oh, you very much. You remember Jason Smith? Yeah, All right. When I'm back. When I'm really not back. I just want to say what are you back to make your fourth <laughs> annual final appearance? <laughs> <Thank you>, <laughs> it's been great work with you. Everybody up in the control room says uh, goodbye, good luck, and have, good, have a fun time with Sonic. Thank you. And now here's a Christmas card uh, to <laughs> all of you out there. And so uh, from all of us here, uh, good night. You have been watching News Center 6, the region's most watched newscast. Joe Manchin, former astronaut John McBride, State Senator Lloyd Jackson, and former delegate Percy, a er, Percy Ashcraft, uh, to name a few. Just a few. Well, it is the start of the Gully Whitewater rafting season. And many whitewater companies are reporting the busiest season ever. But is that good or bad? And just what does that mean to the local economy? Well, New Center 6's Loretta Bunn joins us now from our Beckley Bureau with some answers to that question. Loretta? Sherry and Kevin, with an estimated 60,000 rafters expected to go down the gully this year, you can imagine how much money's in the sport. This rafting complex is a far cry from what it was 22 years ago when Paul Brewer ran mountain river tours out of a small garage. Today, thousands of rafters and hundreds of thousands of dollars later, this is now a booming business. But at what cost to the outdoor lover? Is there ever a point when it's going to be too crowded? There is, we think. They're doing studies right now, though, but we're not sure where that point is, so it's good to study. Well, when you think about it, if you go to an amusement park, you think of waiting two, two and a half hours. Well, that's never happened on the golly. 15, 20, 30 minutes at the most has ever happened. Brewer says the impact of rafting on the Fayette County economy is staggering. It's so good, Brewer's expanding his business. The wood he's using comes from Appalachian log structures in Princeton, and these carpenters are from the local area. Brewer says he employs about 80 guides alone, dozens more to staff the office. If you think white water rafting is just for rafters, think again. One report says that for every rafter who comes into this community, that person spends $300 over a two-day period. That's money spent on rafting, a motel, gas, and food. Just ask David Weaver, a top forensics expert in U.S. and best friends with Henry Lee, the forensic specialist, testifying for the O.J. Simpson defense. He patented a new tool used by crime fighters throughout the world, but he says he's happier here, doing ceramics and oil painting at his own studio near Babcock State Park. Much of his work is sold to tourists and rafters. A lot of people know what I've done. They know what I used to do. Um, but even while I was in forensics, I was creating art and trying to achieve the old master's technology, doing pottery and all of that. So it was a natural transition for me. Valerie Ritter gave up a lucrative career with a hotel management company in Ohio to move here. She bought an old coal executive home in Winona 10 years ago and turned it into a bed and breakfast, mainly used by rafters. I came from a sort of a corporate environment where everyone had a real sense of urgency. You know, everything, you had to hurry up and get it done, and everything was very departmentalized, and everybody had their little thing, and you had to get your little thing done. So, so for a while, that was frustrating, but I think I have um, acclimated to the pace, and would have a hard time going the other way now. One interesting point to keep in mind, Sherry and Kevin, it is fast and furious work for those who rely on business from the Gauley River. Just 22 days make up the Gauley River season. And while business is often as brisk as the river, some businesses virtually shut down until the next spring. Sherry and Kevin. All right, thank you much, yeah, Loretta Budden, thank reporting you. live from Beckley. Well, coming up on the news, have you noticed a change in your grocery bill? And authorities are still trying to piece together a crime spree last night that spanned Montgomery and Giles counties. And included a string of robberies as well as the murder of a Virginia Tech student. Tonight, News Center 6's Loretta Budd joins us from our newsroom. Uh, Loretta, is there any word on a motive for this murder? 
Well, Sherry and Kevin, the man accused of killing the Virginia Tech student says he did it because he, quote, saw his face. The student was in a parking lot at a convenience store in Blacksburg last night. Three men went into the convenience store and came out and apparently needed a getaway car. They took the car and the Virginia Tech student. Police say the men needed the student's car, and because he was so unlucky last night, he ended up being murdered because he saw and knew too much. Now, sadly enough, last night's murder was just the beginning of a long chain of crimes last night. Investigators spent the day combing through the car belonging to the victim, Alexander DeFilippis, a Virginia Tech student. Now on the back seat, passenger side, there is a fired bullet casing. Giles County authorities found bullets and three guns, a high-powered rifle, a shotgun, and a pistol inside the car. Authorities say after the three reportedly murdered DeFilippis, they headed down 460 to a town called Eggleston, where authorities say they robbed a convenience store. Police say they hit a second convenience store, the M&W Market, about 10 miles away in Pembroke. The store's owner chased the suspects until he was fired upon. Police took over the chase and happened to catch the men on a rural road. We were able to locate the vehicle and apprehend one subject uh, as he exited the vehicle. The other two subjects fled on foot. One was uh, apprehended approximately 10 minutes later, about 100 yards away. Then after a brief confrontation with officers, while the subject uh, held a gun to his own head, uh, deputies were able to talk him into putting the gun down and surrendering. The third subject was apprehended approximately 45 minutes later, two miles from the scene, and offered no resistance to police. The suspects are 27-year-old Benjamin Lilly, who reportedly shot the student, his 20-year-old brother Mark Lilly, and 19-year-old Gary Barker, all from the Blacksburg-Christiansburg area. The men are being held in the Giles County Jail on charges of armed robbery and using a firearm in the commission of a felony. Now, as far as the murder charges go, all three men are charged with capital murder in Montgomery County. That's not the only charge, though. Robbery, abduction, also carjacking. Sherry and Kevin. Okay, right, thank, thank you much, you, Loretta. And, police. and now let's go live to Loretta Budd, who is in our Beckley Bureau with an update on that explosion in Lewisburg we told you about at the top of our newscast. Now, Loretta, you just got back uh, from Lewisburg. Uh, bring us up to speed. What's the latest? Well, Kevin, I did just get back. Our photographer is still on the scene. It is a trailer fire, possibly also an explosion. It happened about nine miles north of Lewisburg late this afternoon. A mother and her two children were inside the trailer home. Reports are, at least one report is, that the washing or the dryer actually had a short in it, caused a small fire inside the home. She apparently tried to put out the fire but was not able to. Uh, one report is that she ran out of the trailer with her two children. Then just moments later, the trailer reportedly exploded because uh, of a fuel oil tank uh, just outside the trailer or in the back of the trailer. I did smell uh, heavy fumes from fuel oil, so it, it sounds like that may be very well the case, but fire officials have not yet confirmed it. A nearby trailer uh, suffered quite extensive damage, some broken windows, uh, maybe some smoke damage, but the scene right now is uh, fire crews are still there. Uh, putting out what little embers are still burning and the trailer was just completely destroyed as you can see nothing left of it now neighbors are wondering uh, how this woman's going to make it okay. uh, luckily nobody was injured but now neighbors are trying to scrounge together some clothing for her. as you can imagine it's a tough situation again it happened about nine miles north of Lewisburg late this afternoon Kevin. all right Loretta thank you very much and of course we'll have try to have more for you tonight at 11 o'clock that's our report have a good evening Two more dead in the